You are now watching The Lone Blown. Blown! Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? You're now back here at The Lone Blown's channel, and today we're gonna be doing over our first set review on the channel, and it's gonna be of our English equivalent of Darkness e Ablaze. Shout out to Poke Beach for making sure that we had the translations for all of this. Um, it's on their website. You can go to pokebeach.com. Totally check that out. We've seen what was Darkness Ablaze in terms of Japan, which was, it was like, I don't know, like Infinity Zone, uh, Eruption Walker, some Charizard Grim Snarl theme decks, and some other things. So this is my first time looking at the set, our English equivalent. I've previously gone over it for my own testing purposes, um, for the four sets that it was comprised of and any promos in between. So we'll go over each set. And the way that we're going to be rating cards is I'm going to explain what the card does. I might go over if it's great or not. So if it's a Pokemon, for example, like this Paris, where it's like scratch or 20 damage, I mean, I'm just not going to necessarily give it the time of day. When it comes down to it, I'm going to be like, okay, whatever, it's scratch, 20 damage, it evolves into something. But for a Pokemon like Parasect, we have three ways of going it. It is either hot, 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 no question, Flames. Uh... If it's not no question flames it might be a head scratcher for me i mean there's not a particular name for it or anything like that we'll see exactly if it's something that's i'm like for example let's go over the parasac just so you have an understanding of how our rating system works uh i think that this card it's 120 hp make sure that we turn this off so you can actually see what the card does so 120 hp uh flip a coin of heads they're paralyzed 110 damage what is this card? This card is just straight up bad. It's a thumbs down. So that's how we're going to be going through our ratings. So with that being said, let's uh let's just jump right into it. I mean, there's a lot of grounds to cover here. So I'm excited to explain everything that's going on. So first things first, we are doing Butterfree V. So it's a basic Pokemon. It's a V Pokemon, so it is worth two prize cards. I mean, for the more important Pokemon, we will be clicking and showing exactly what the card does. Um, so 190 HP, worth two prize cards, making Confused and Poisoned, Blasting Winds. That's 130 damage. I mean, we don't really have any grass supports. Make, doing special conditions is kind of meh right now. Luckily, this card can evolve. But for the Butterfree, I'm going to have to give it a gigantic bad. Butterfree is pretty terrible compared to most Pokemon that are just, it's, it's just bad. I don't know what to say. Maybe uh, maybe the VMAX is a little bit more forgiving. Um, a Pokemon that can evolve can always evolve into greatness. We have Butterfree VMAX. So 300 HP, which for a VMAX is on the lower side. Um, if you look at other Pokemon like Eternatus VMAX, that I believe is also coming out in the set, it has 340 HP. Um, the card's pretty, and we get to see what the VMAX looks like of it. So, I mean, the card's pretty and all that. Um, 300, so that's low. Grass, grass, colorless, 150. Your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned and confused. Um, with Switch, super, uh, with Switch, Scoop Up Net, everything in the format, I'm going to give this card bad for now. I mean, if I'm ever wrong with one of these things, I apologize in advance. It's one of those things where... These are my early takes on it. As the format e kind of evolves, I just really don't see any world where it matters if your opponent's Pokemon is poisoned or confused. Um, special conditions typically are weak in the TCG. It's just nothing great going on here. Um, so we got Paris, and I'm not even gonna give Paris the time of the day. It evolves into Paris Sect. I mean, we saw the Paris Sect. That's the card that we went over. Uh, this card is straight up bad. I, I, I don't see any competitive use for it. It's not doing a lot of damage. It doesn't have any cool attacks. It's more of just like fodder for the sets to pull. Okay, so Carnivine. Carnivine's a card that does not evolve. As a return, 20 damage if draw cards until you have five cards in your hands. Uh, we got Giga Drain going on here. Heal from the same amount. I mean, I, I don't see that this card's going to see too much play by any means. I think that Carnivine is probably too weak for competitive play. This would be great for a pre-release, but unfortunately due to the worldwide pandemic, we don't even have those. So uh, we're, we're starting off with uh, Darkness E Blaze being bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say here. 
Pan Sage, uh, it evolves into Sima Sage, so 10 damage, 20 damage. This card, we not having it. We're not having it here. Um, Sima Sage, let's see what it does. 100 for a stage one, that's fine. Uh, 30 for grass, 110, this Pokemon can attack during your next turn. Um, this won't even get a one shot on a VMAX. You need to do like 160 to 170 and its attack isn't like you could use triple acceleration energy so like maybe in a world where this could actually do like something but until we have like i'm just thinking hypothetical situations you get impacts kind of a terrible attack um and i'm not going to go through situations of triple acceleration against a pokemon that's weak to grass to do 220 damage um that's just not part of the metagame i also think that there's probably better options when it comes to the set so we're gonna give this a straight up bad um geez darkness ablaze is really taking the cake for being a horrible set so far um but we're only seven cards in um usually usually there's got to be something interesting grass hasn't been hot for a second so maybe it's just grass type that's bad carablast right here i mean it's winking at us so that's a cool sign thanks carablast for giving us the big old wink uh continuous headbutt this does evolve now this card evolves i believe into a metal type pokemon um i'm not sure though we'll see exactly how it goes i know shelmet is the same thing this pokemon evolves i'm super confused as to which one evolves into which I'm sure we'll find out so we have a seligor uh it's a weird looking pokemon for sure um i mean the art's really cool on it but the art's not going to save it from its um single attack 70 damage super vanilla it's cards like this that for me i find are the most boring in the pokemon tcg and the reason why they're the most boring for me is because no ability just a simple energy requirement no special attack nothing th this card does not have the sauce so that means this card is absolutely bad and uh i mean if you're a collector i'm sorry i'm gonna be harsh i'm gonna be straight up with you um for those of you who don't know me, I am a professional Pokemon TCG player. I do Pokemon as my full-time career. So I'm just going to give you straight up exactly what we got. So we got Rowlet here. I mean, Rowlet's actually interesting because it does have an ability. So even if the ability is bad, at least it has an ability. At least it gives us something to ponder beyond just an attack that does straight up 70 damage. Like for this Acela Gore, let's, let's put it into perspective. For this Acela Gore to be good, it would have to do like... 150 damage or something like that because at least you can modify the damage to knock out a v max if it's weak to grass type but whatever let's we let's just go on rally it come on rally it maybe save us from this so 50 hp which is pretty blah especially for a basic pokemon i mean pretty cute rally i really like the art style on it um the artist is in all caps so you know it's got to be good Sky Circus, so if you played Bird Keeper from your hand, and I guess we'll go over Bird Keeper later in the set because it's a card that we previously don't have. Um, ignore all energy in the attack cost of this Pokemon. Okay, you wonder what? That's pretty cool. Um, so if we have Bird Keeper, we can do 60 damage to one of our opponent's Pokemon. I mean, that doesn't sound terrible by any means. Um, considering it's a Rowlet, we've seen other attacks like this um, with the Pokemon. I think it's the Catterday ability. Um, it's not really competitive when it thing when it comes down to it, but it does give us options and they do have this thing where if you do play bird keeper, I mean, if there's a bird keeper deck that comes out in the future, this is probably a card that's going to be teched into it. 60 snipe isn't bad, especially for free. And I mean, considering this Pokemon can evolve, we'll see exactly what the decidui and, uh, Dartrix offer if they are in this set. So we're going to give this card, um, we're going to give it a head scratcher. I don't think it's hot. I don't think it's worthy of that but it's like it exists i think this card could see play in the future but it's a really like like head scratch i can't i can't 100 determine that or not dartrix i mean dartrix is a pokemon that i think is like it, it's just there to evolve there's nothing special about this card but it's not worth our time to even rate it because it is evolving so we got decidui here decidui at its uh, 140 HP, that's cool. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks of your Pokemon, uh, by your opponent's Pokemon V and Pokemon GX. So that's gonna stop GX, V, and VMAX Pokemon. Um, so that's absolutely insane. Uh, we, we can 100% work with a card like this. I think this is absolutely amazing. And what does that constitute? 
Hot Flames! Yes! This card's absolutely insano. I think this is probably going to be a tier 1, tier 1 1.5. Tier 2, at worst deck. Um, I didn't even get the split arrow yet. That's how excited I am for this card. I think Forest Camouflage is just a better version of Obstagoon at this moment. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments below if you feel any different from it. But I think I think it's just a better version of Obstagoon. Um, 90 damage, 20 damage to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Two energy requirement. So that means that you could probably just slap a capture energy, search your deck for a Rowlet or another Pokemon of choice, and then attach a grass energy. The fact that it's not grass grass, this Pokemon also works incredibly well with Turfield Stadium. I mean, I'm going to give it again. I think this card's absolutely hot. It's saving it, it's saving what we got going on for, uh, <laughs> for the grass Pokemon. The grass Pokemon have been terrible so far, and this Decidueye line is absolutely saving them. Moving on, we see that there's a Boon Suite. So search your deck for a Grass Energy card and attach to one of your Pokemon. That's okay, 60 HP is whatever. But this is not a standalone Pokemon. It does evolve. Um, choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, switch it with their active Pokemon. I mean, that's an interesting attack. Slap, 40 damage, whatever. Who cares about that? Power Whip, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This is 20 damage to that Pokemon for each energy card attached to this Pokemon. Wait. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. I'll show you exactly what this card looks like in case you want to see. I mean, it looks pretty cool. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage to that Pokemon for each energy attached to this Pokemon. Stop that kick. You may choose an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon and return it to their hands. I mean, I don't really see how this card's great in any capacity. I think Serena is just... It exists. It's a low average stage 2 right now. Its damage is not doing enough with Setback Kick to make it worthwhile, even with weakness. Um, its energy requirements are average, if not, like, whatever. There's no way um, we're attaching a bunch of energies. This Pokemon has 150 HP. So unless there's some kind of crazy combo that comes out in the future, this card is just absolute, straight-up hot garbage. Um, bringing it back to the grass route roots of this set. Um, moving on to Wimpod... It uh, has not and run 10 damage. Switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Again, this Pokemon evolves into another Pokemon, and we're going to see exactly what that Pokemon is here. Galissapod. I think Galissapod, um, I mean, it looks pretty cool. Um, colorless, colorless, adversity slash. 30 damage. This is 50 damage for each of your opponent's Pokemon V and Pokemon GX in play. I mean, attacks like this are pretty cool. Um, normally, they don't end up as competitive as we'd like, but I think it's I think it's actually a cool attack. So if your opponent ends up having three Pokemon in play, so let's say there's a Crobat, a Senescorch VMAX, and a Dedenne, you're hitting for 180 damage. Um, if they like, if they have, I don't, they wouldn't really have six in play, because um, six would be 330 damage for Adversity Slash. But maybe against an Eternated VMAX, this could do a lot because they have those extra three bench spots. So Galissapod might be actually competitive. I'm not going to give it hot, but it's between like a head scratcher and a hot. If we were to do anything. I mean, I think this card is always going to be a card that you're going to want to have in your binder. Is it possibly useful in the future? 100%. Um, out of all the grass Pokemon, I mean, Decidueye is absolutely the best grass Pokemon we've seen in this set. This is the second best grass Pokemon we have. And I think this card will be good in the future. I have a gut feeling about it. Um, if, if not, it's going to be one of those cards that's always an option. So, moving on to Fire-type Pokemon. We've seen the first 18 Pokemon and have only found two cards so far. We're moving into Charizard B. So, Claw Slash, 80 damage. Uh, I mean, Charizard B, 80 damage. And then Fire Fire, Colorless, Colorless, 20, 220 damage. This card, 2 energy attached to this Pokemon. So, it's 3 energy attack because this Pokemon will be working with Welder. So you'd be playing Welder, attaching Fire, Fire, and attaching for your turn. So you can only attach three energies on a turn. Claw Slash is not enough. Pokemon like Heatran GX will take that cake. Um, for an extra energy, 220 for four is fine. Um, discarding two energies is kind of sucky. So for this card, luckily it does evolve. I'm going to give it a Head Scratcher. I mean, I think that this card is in the middle. It's a pretty mediocre Pokemon V. It looks cool. Fire has a lot of support. Luckily, it does evolve. So let's see if Charizard VMAX makes it any better. 
so charizard v max it evolves from charizard v it has 330 hp which is quite strong it's right up there with eternatus v max for the most part um and this card immediately looks almost the exact same as what we have going on for our charizard it just does slightly more damage than claw slash it's claw swipe here so an extra 20 damage just for the same energy requirements and then for an extra energy it's doing an extra 80 damage here with g max wildfire 300 damage so immediately my mind for this card is it's going to be played with welder it might be played with triple acceleration energy 300 damage is so close to knocking out so many v max pokemon so what exactly is this going to do i mean you could play it with vitality bands galarian obstagoon and other cards in order to hit a one shot on your opponent's pokemon do i think this card is good yeah it's just kind of inefficient to attach five energies to a pokemon i mean for one more fire energy we have rush ram and charizard gx that could do 300 damage and get through an attack it doesn't have to discard anything so i think this card um as much as i think charizard's cool and i'm known as north america's resident fire player i'm gonna give this card i want to give it uh if we had one thing it's between confused and hot do i think people are going to play this card 100 am i going to play this card yeah i'm going to test it for sure do i think this is the next best deck 100 no i think that this is going to be um a tier 2 deck maybe a tier 2.5 deck it seems like it's going to be difficult to get the one shots and it's not as easy to power up as eternatus v max now we might fall into a case where it does not get as countered as eternatus and maybe no one's going to be playing water types but this is what we got going on i mean fire starting off stronger than grass for sure I think Charizard VMAX is definitely a playable card. If you're newer to the game, this would be a great strategy to get introduced into the game 100%. Um, stay tuned on the channel to see if there's any videos on Charizard VMAX. So we've got Houndoom V. Um, let's see what we've got for Houndoom V. So before we look at the picture of Houndoom V, we're just going to swirl it around just for fun. No, I'm kidding with you. So we got Searing Flame, 20 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. Vengeful Flame, a hundo damage. If you have any bench fire Pokemon um, with any damage counters, uh, this says a hundred more damage. So 200 damage for three energies. I mean, yeah, it's okay. Um, I think I'd rather be playing Heatran GX or Victini V or Ninetales V. This card is just kind of in the middle, unfortunately. So it, it's not bad. It, it, it's... It could be hot as a tech we also lost rainbow energy in our rotation so it, it's really something to consider we'd have to figure this out so we'll give it a confused head scratch for now and then see if there's anything in the future it's a card i'm willing to be wrong on so what's up next we got torchic <clears throat> torchic has call for family search your deck for a basic pokemon put it onto your bench shuffle your deck afterwards live cool whatever this card's not going to be the cake. We're looking for the Blaziken. Uh, again, same thing. Combuskin has two very basic attacks. 20 damage. And then 40 damage for three. Again, who cares? What does this Blaziken offer? So it's fire and fighting. Sometimes these dual type Pokemon are actually okay. So 130, dam 130 damage. Attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Do I think this is cards okay? I mean, you could power it up with Welder. It's it's not terrible. It's just 260 for weakness, 130 damage. Would this beat an Eternatus VMAX deck? I don't know. I think there's a lot of better decks that you could even try. Like if you're, it doesn't really counter. Fire is not a type that's like we're really trying to play right now because it doesn't necessarily counter anything particular um it's not necessarily doing enough to be a fighting type pokemon so i think that this card's kind of cold right now um i'm gonna give it a confuse to be nice i'm kind of in the middle with it it's a head scratcher for me but we'll see uh if this card could see any play in the future maybe it will maybe it won't i've got a heatran here heatran's definitely a pokemon that doesn't evolve fire colorless uh, 30 damage they're burned that's fine fire fire colorless 80 damage does an additional 10 damage for each damage counter on this pokemon we're in a format where 130 damage is not hard to do at all our opponent's definitely going to just be knocking this out in one shot 
so there's no way that raging flare is ever going to do more damage is there a way for us to build up raging flare in the future yeah possibly um for that sake i'm going to give this heatran um i'm going to give it a confuse but it's definitely leaning more on the confused bad side so we'll see exactly how this card plays out i think it's just like average um it's not bad i mean if you're playing a fire type deck consider it especially if you have a way to break raging flare it's cards like this where i'm like spirit tomb on broken bonds was a card that was absolutely busted during its time is this something that it can do i mean we'll, we'll see exactly how heatran evolves with the formats so we already saw how bad the how the other uh grass variant of this card did i mean i think they're different pokemon I think it's like Simus Sage, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this Pokemon evolves. This card's just kind of meh right now. So let's see what it evolves into. Simus Seer, 30 damage, 110. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. Uh, this card's just straight up bad. Again, it's one of these cards where it's like super vanilla. There's nothing hot about it. Um, it, it it's cool, especially if you're like a Simus Seer fan. But I got, I got to give it... It, it's cold it, it's just cold um so we got galarian darmana tan and i mean the art of this card is cool i think it's one of the new sword and shield uh exclusives well i guess i mean it came out in the galar region which we're in um so this is one of the new forms for darmana tan it evolves from galarian Dar darumaka i mean what, what does this do 40 damage um, I guess Galarian Darumaka is a different type, probably water. Um, frozen Heat, 110 damage. You may discard all water energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, this attack does 60 more damage. I mean, it does water, water, colorless. If we ever get a water type, welder type card, this could be an interesting type addition in a deck. For that very reason, I'm going to get it confused. I, I'm, I'm slightly perplexed by this card. It's a head scratcher for me. I think 170 damage is the number that we're looking for. Because 170 damage times 2 is 340. Most v most VMAX Pokemon are going to max out at 340. So if it is weak to fire, let's say if uh, there's a world where there's a big VMAX Pokemon that's weak to fire type, this might be a single prize card Pokemon that we could power up. I mean, we can't power it up with Frostmoth because Frostmoth only attaches to water type Pokemon on your bench. But maybe um, we could attach them to the Galarian Darumaka and then snipe hard and have a fire type Pokemon in a frost moth base deck I, I i blah again it's a head scratcher for me um i'm not going to overthink it if it ever comes to the point where galarian darmanitan is playable at least we know it's option <clears throat> moving on to larvesta uh this is a pokemon that's going to evolve into volcarona we're going to see what volcarona does if your opponent's active pokemon has any damage counters it's only doing 80 damage and then straight up 110 um, I know you already know what I'm going to vote. Bad. Oh, wait, I clicked the wrong one. Bad. Uh, it, it's one of those things where this card's too vanilla. It's not doing enough. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe I feel bad for giving it bad. I mean, we could do 160 damage for a single fire, but fire type Pokemon typically do a lot of damage. So I'd rather just like play like Welder on a Heatran GX or play something else that could just do more damage. Um, here we're jumping into Fletchinder. Again, I think it evolves from Fletchling, if I know my Pokemon uh, Pokedex enough. Yeah, but I think that Pokemon's probably going to be a colorless Pokemon if we're looking into it. So this Pokemon is just uh, evolution fodder, as I like to call it. Uh, 20 damage to your opponent. The defending Pokemon burned. That's fine. Let's see what the Talonflame has. It has an ability. If this Pokemon is in our active spot and is damaged by an attack by your opponent's Pokemon, uh, the attacking Pokemon's burned. Uh, mock flight 120 damage during your opponent's next turn the defending pokemon cannot retreat do i think that this card is good i mean it's it's definitely just bad unfortunately um we don't we don't have any way to bring this pokemon out i think that it's one of those things where we have to evolve into a pokemon that we need to welder into it's not doing enough damage to get a one shot of v max like, in a world where in this current standard format that we have of Ultra Prism to Rebel Clash, we have Baby Blacephalon from Unbroken Bonds. It's doing semi-infinite damage for three energies. And in this world, we have a Stage 2 Pokemon that's doing 120 damage for the same amount of energy. I, I, I just can't see how this card's playable. 
moving on to one of the cards that i'm so glad that i'm seeing it actually be in the set i was actually getting scared that it was not in the set we have Senescorge v and it's absolutely busted this might be the best fire v pokemon that we have so far um, 20 damage you may discard an energy from this pokemon if you do discard an energy from your opponent's active pokemon so i mean for single fire energy this is a great i mean this attack does not sound great but let me sell you on it if your opponent's playing in a, a, a deck like adp zation we could actually discard their energy if they're not careful discarding an energy could be simple and set back your opponent turns especially if they planned on it or did not see this coming um, maybe maybe they attacked and maybe they just passed against a Jirachi or a Volcanion or something and then you just switch and you discard their energy and ruin it. Something like Dragapult, the single crushing hammer can ruin that deck. So just having Radiating Heat is an awesome attack. Doing 180 for 4 isn't terrible. I mean, it's just a basic 180 attack, but that's enough to knock out a Dedenne GX with a boss's orders or even a Crobat B for that matter. So I'm going to give this card hot right now. Um... It's not hot on its own. Um, if it was on its own, I'd give it a perplexed if it just didn't evolve. But luckily for us, this card does evolve, which makes it even better. We got Senescorge V Max. Uh, 320 HP evolving from the Senescorge V. It's got G Max Seneferno, so it's doing 40 damage plus 40 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. It has to be fire energies. And you may attach a fire energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon after calculating. So the one that you attach does not count towards the damage. But this Pokemon scales up really nicely and you get an extra energy. Um, there's a lot of ways to play this. Whether you're playing with the Jirachi Welder build. Very similar to the Fire Toolbox deck that I've seen success with at the 2020 Oceania International Championships. Or you might want to play this with a Volcanion build. Or maybe you want to play this as a Greens build. Or maybe you want to play this as a healing build. I mean, this card has a lot of potential in a lot of different deck builds. So I had to give this, if there was something better than hot, I'd give it straight up hot. Um, for my own personal testing, this is one of my favorite cards in the entire set. And I'm stoked, stoked, stoked that it's actually coming out. I'm glad that it's not coming out in Legendary Heartbeat or whatever our September set's called. Moving on, we got Galarian Mr. Mime, which now can evolve because of Sword and Shield into Mr. Rhyme. Uh, during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 damage less from attacks. Blah, that card's whatever. What does Galarian Mr. Rhyme do? So once during your turn, you may choose one of your opponent's face down prize cards and switch it with the top card of their deck. I don't know how I feel about that. If there's any way that we can control what the top card of their deck is and put it in their prize cards maybe this will be something cool in a lock deck later um there's mad party this attack does 20 damage for each pokemon in your scar pile that has mad party uh a little bit of a spoiler alert if you've looked over any of the translations we do have the galarian mr rhyme um it, it pairs with bunnel b and other cards to there's four of them for mad party so far and i'm saying so far because they could release more in the future um we've seen other decks like this I'm going to have to give this card a meh. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work in our metagame. I know that players have been testing Mad Party to almost virtually zero success. Uh, so it, it's just not really working for us right now. Um, its ability is interesting. I mean, this both concepts are interesting, whether you're looking at it for its ability or its attack. Um, it's not hot. It's not bad. It's just kind of in the middle. Then we got Suicune. Um, Suicune is doing 20 damage, 130 damage, return two water energies from your hand to this Pokemon. I mean, do I think that this attacks, I mean, for a single prize card Pokemon, this might be, it's, it's a math for me. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad enough to be considered bad. I think that it's, uh, I think it's one of those things where it's, it's just like, okay. And maybe it has a situation where it's okay. So we're going right into a Feebas. <laughs> that Feebas looks absolutely terrifying. Um, it's just chilling in the middle of this lake. Got nap, 20 damage. Good thing it evolves into Milotic. I mean, this might have some expanded potential um, because it could evolve into another Milotic, but this is just, again, evolution. Pokemon to evolve from. Uh, if you're evolving into something, it's just a step along the way. Got Milotic. Once during your turn, you heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. I mean, it does need to be in the active spot, and there's nothing that prevents it, so maybe it's. I'm going to give it a meh. 
it, it seems okay, but we'll have to we'll have to see if exactly if it's worthwhile or not. I'm not entirely sure. It, it maybe there's some kind of stall deck that works with it. Relicant, search your deck for two rare fossil cards. Rare fossil is the way to evolve into the new. Um, I don't know if they're like bird fish kind of things. It's the new fossil mechanic. Uh, rare fossil is similar to unidentified fossil. This seems like it might be one of the only ways to search it out. For that reason, this card is going to get a middle of the road head scratcher. Is it playable? Is it not? We'll have to see if the other ones are even playable. Who here has high hopes for Pan Poor evolving into semi Semipore? Uh, this card so far, hopefully it evolves into something good. It's actually the same attacks as all of them. I mean, at least they all have the thing of being hot garbage. Uh, it, it's pretty rough. I don't think these cards are playable at all. If you feel so, let me know in the comments below. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, there's a Galarian Dar Darumaka. Totally adorbs, but this is just evolving into Galarian Darmanitan. And it looks like we're getting Galarian Darmanitan. Um, it's a reprint from the Rebel Clash one. I mean, I love this sick theme deck uh, sleeve that it has going on it. It's just because we don't have the new art of it. Um, this attack, whatever, this card is um, unplayable right now. Um, actually, you want to know what? It does 170 damage, so it does kind of work with the other one. So if we play with Frostmoth, we could do 170 damage times two, especially to a Pokemon like Senescorch VMAX. So you want to know what? I'm going to change my mind on uh, Galarian Darmanitan. I think that this card is absolutely cool. Um, it's not great, but I think it's absolutely cool. Maybe there's there's a possibility for a Frostmoth uh, Darmanitan Darmaka deck. I don't I don't hate it. Uh, moving on, we got uh, the summer themed Pokemon, the Ice Cream Cone Vanillites. Uh, Flip a coin if defending Pokemon's paralyzed. That's fine. 60 HP. I mean, Ice Over is a fine attack. Vanillish. It seems like it's uh, the same kind of thing. 30 flip a coin if they're paralyzed. Vanillux. One string return of the. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you may flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. And then 90 damage. Um. Bah. I'm going to have to give this card a middle of the road. I'm not sure about it. It's one of those cards where I think, I think it's fine, but I, I, I'm just not sure. The reason why I'm not sure is because making, making our opponent's Pokemon paralyzed might be a viable strategy and there might be other ways to inflict other special conditions. I know that I've tried a few times with item lock and stuff like that. This Pokemon does have to be in, in that active spot and it is flip a coin. It's probably not going to see play. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend picking this card up, but but I wouldn't necessarily bulk this out if you ended up pulling any from your packs. And then we have uh, Cub Chew. I mean, again, a lot of these water Pokemon are absolutely adorbs. The art in the set is amazing. Uh, chop, 10 damage, 30 damage for Icicle. Meh. Uh, this is doing 150 damage for 3, 50 damage to itself. I think this is worse than the Galarian Darmanitan. Uh, I'm just going to give this a bad. It's not hitting my threshold for 170 damage, um, which would be enough to knock out a Senescorge VMAX or anything like that. Maybe 160 damage would be okay. It's just not there. And then we got uh, Wishiwashi. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw 8 cards and then 20 damage for a 30 HP Pokemon. Wishawashis usually work with other Wishawashi. So far in this set, there's nothing. I don't think there's necessarily anything else that's going to make this card playable. I just got to give it a big thumbs down for now. I don't think this card really necessarily adds anything to the Wishawashi deck. So we see Marini here with some absolutely busted art. We see that Cursula in, Cursula in the background. Uh... What do we got? Marini, 30 damage from this Pokemon. Healing. Uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poison. Luckily for Marini, Marini does evolve into Toxapex. So we have discard an energy from this Pokemon. If you do, heal all damage from this Pokemon. 80 damage your opponent's active Pokemon's poisons. I mean, cool with the artwork, um, but unfortunately this card is absolutely 
bad. Uh, I, I think it's one of those things where a lot of fodder in the set so far. Moving on to Dracovish. This is the card that I was talking about. It evolves from the rare fossil. So this Pokemon is your active Pokemon. Your opponent can't play any Pokemon from their hand to evolve their Pokemon. Uh, stopping your opponent from evolving might be okay at some point. Uh, I'm going to give this a head scratching. I'm, I'm not sure right now. Do I think this card could see play in the future? 100%. Um, there's uh, Archie's Ace in the Hole, that, which can make this possibly strong. It does have to be in the active spot, which is the worst part about this card. If it had to be on the bench, this card would be absolutely busted. Um, but stopping your opponent from evolving in general could be okay. This could be a larger part of a lock deck. We'll see exactly how it goes. Right now, it seems like it's going to be incredibly difficult to get out in standard. And it's going to be incredibly difficult to activate Primal Law. Um, maybe this would work well uh, with some other cards. We'll have to see. Uh, we have another one of these cards that evolves from Rare Fossil. Uh, Arctovish. It's a big, smiley, fishy thing. All these uh, Pokemon that evolve from Rare Fossil are some freaky-looking creature, but this one looks pretty happy and normalized. Um, hard face, 90 damage during your opponent's next turn. This Pokemon takes 60 damage less from attacks. 130 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. What do we say to this one? You already know what it is. Bad. Uh, this card just doesn't have what it takes for our standard formats. Um, I mean, we don't even have a limited format with the pre-releases to run this within. So I don't think it's going to work. We got uh, one of the busted Mareeps. Again, this is a Pokemon that's going to evolve. So I'm going to take it pretty lightly. Static Shock, 20 damage. Meh. Flaffy, Static Shock. Uh, really cool art. 40 damage though. Meh. We got Ampharos, 50 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon's confused. And then Lightning Ball for 130. I like the energy requirements of this card. Um, but that's going to be coming more from a pre-release. You already know what it is. This card's going to be straight up hot garbage. I mean, all the arts look really cool. I really like the art of the whole lineup. But we're not judging on art. We're judging on competitive viability. Or maybe even future-proofing it. Or maybe even expanded. Something that gives us hope. This card would be maybe cool for a pre-release if they were to hold, happen in any alternative world. We got Electric here, 60 damage, discard all energy attached to this Pokemon. This is a Pokemon that evolves. Is it going to be good? I'm not sure. Let's see what Manetric uh, becomes in the set. So we got Strafe, 30 damage. You may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. 150 damage for Lightning, Lightning Colorless, uh, 150, so 30 damage to one of your bench Pokemon. Uh, it's going to be incredibly hard to power this up, maybe with the Tapu Coco Prism Star. In our post-rotation format, we do lose Electro Power. I really don't see how this card's going to see any competitiveness at all. Uh, it's just straight bad. Um, it seems like this set is very hit or very miss. Moving on to Vikavolt, <clears throat> which in my testing I know is, a, is an absolute hit. 210 HP for a basic Pokemon is strong. Lightning Colorless, 50 damage during your opponent's next turn. They can't play any item cards from their hands. Uh, this card is <laughs> insane. And then for Lightning, Lightning Colorless, Super Zap Cannon, Cannon, 190 damage, and you discard two energy cards from this Pokemon. What is this card? This card is absolutely hot, hot flames higher. No question, flames. Uh, we absolutely love this card. You know we love to see it. Uh, it's like Seismitoti X. Item lock is great. You can use this with Tapu Coco Prism Star. Um, before uh, the card rotates, you can play this with Thunder Mountain and Electro Power and Volkner. I mean, Lightning has a lot of support. We've seen how Picaron's absolutely torn it up this season. Uh, is this card going to see playability post rotation? I mean, it does lose a lot of support, but it still gains Tapu Coco Prism Star. Um, I personally built a list with Amoongus to abuse asleep and peril and sleep and uh poisoned so maybe check that out there is a deck profile on the channel let's uh let's see what we got going on here next tapu coco draw two cards lightning lightning colorless 110 damage <clears throat> for a basic pokemon i'm gonna give this a middle of the ground i'm not sure this could be okay in a lightning type deck it's free retreat is where it's good um it's, it's semi-viable at best right now. Uh, we got Toxel. Uh, Toxel, I mean, it's the baby. Uh, it's sticking its little tongue out at us. 
Slap, 10 damage. Static Shock, 20 damage. But it does evolve into Toxtricity. Risk Taker. Colorless, Colorless. Flip a coin if heads discard 5 cards from the top of your opponent's deck. If tails discard 5 cards from the top of your deck. I mean... Is this card good? It's... It's, uh... If we have a way to manipulate it, I mean, we have... If Glimwood Tangle does come out in the set, we'll find out in a little bit. This card might be okay. There might be ways to manipulate Risk Taker as as a deco concept. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it's like meh, um, but I am leaning closer to it being bad. Uh, let me know how you feel in the comments below about this one. I I I'm 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 leaning towards bad on it, but I I don't want to I don't want to pull the trigger on a card, especially considering the set has not been very great to us so far. <clears throat> Moving on, we got Pin Kirchen. Draw two cards, 50 damage for Lightning Colorless Colorless. Flip a coin if they're now paralyzed. I mean, it seems like it's a promo card in Japan. This card's straight up trash. I don't see any reason why you'd want to use a 3 energy 50 damage attack. Unless it's like the defending Pokemon is now knocked out. It's just not there. Uh, we got Draco Zolt. What's Draco Zolt do? 30 damage during your next turn. This does 90 more damage. 200 damage. Uh, this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. I think it's going to be incredibly hard to just get out. And power up the energies on this Pokemon. I, I don't see it. Um, I mean, look, if I gave Galarian Darmanitan, because you do 170, I, I mean, I'm going to give this card, uh, it can knock out a VMAX if, if you have a way to power up four energies on this Pokemon. Um, maybe with a triple acceleration energy and a Tapu Koko Prism Star, this card's absolutely busted. Maybe if something's weak to lightning and it's a VMAX Pokemon and you're drawing three prize cards. So in the sake of that, it's a single prize card Pokemon that has an, an appropriate damage output. I'll give it that. For any other reason, I think this card's generally not great. Um, I wouldn't bulk this one out yet. I, I wouldn't necessarily put it at the front of your binder either. Moving on is Arctozolt. Uh, so whenever your opponent attaches an energy from their hand to one of their Pokemon, put two damage counters on that Pokemon. This card is stackable. So if you have multiples out in play, your opponent's going to take multiple damage counters. If your opponent is playing a welder, they're going to take even more damage counters because each one of those energy attachments counts as long as it's your opponent's attaching it from their hands. Uh, do I think this card's great right now? I have tried to build a deck with it. I don't think my deck is nearly viable at all, but I do think this card has some potential in the future. I think this card's pretty hot, and it's, it's one of those cards that I think if we have a spread deck, this card's going to find its way in there. Uh, the biggest thing holding it back is that Rare Fossil, uh, as you can see we've seen a few times, is a tough mechanic to deal with right now. At least I believe so. Relicanth, so far in our set review, is the only card that's allowing us to search out Rare Fossil. Otherwise, it's us literally picking for a, an item card, which is like a needle in a haystack, basically. So, let's see how it goes. Moving on to Psychic Pokemon. We have Jigglypuff. <clears throat> Jigglypuff is cute. I mean, I wish it was holding its famous marker microphone because I am a 90s baby. Uh, Mumble, 10 damage. Mooncake, 20 damage. Luckily, this card does evolve into Wigglytuff. Sleep Pulse, 30 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Uh, colorless, colorless, colorless. Double smash, 90 times the damage. Flip two coins. I mean, this card is just absolutely hot garbage right now. Um, there, there's nothing that this card, it, it's it's cute, it's just not there. Moving on to Mew V. 69. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> X-Ball, 30 damage times, uh, this attack does 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon and your opponent's active Pokemon. We've seen attacks like this, they're, they're like okay, uh, but this card is mediocre. Uh, I, I don't really feel it. It's retreat cost is free, which is nice. I don't hate that part. Um, it's HP is fine. It's a little on the low side. It's weakness is meh. Eternatus, as long as it's in the set, which I assume it is. Um, 
that's going to gobble this up. Resistance, I totally will appreciate the fighting resistance just in general. It's better than nothing. The attack is like semi-viable. Got Snubble. Again, one of these Pokemon that evolves. 30 damage, just absolutely basic attack. Let's see what this does. The defending Pokemon can't retreat during your next turn. 130 damage. Again, it's one of these really boring cards and it's just not... It's not doing it for us. So, you got Lunatone. Look at the top four cards of either player's deck, then return them to the top card of their deck in any order. That might be see some limited playability. Uh, psychic for Psychic Colorless, 20 plus. This attack does 20 damage for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. I mean, I think this card is a cross between uh, bad and meh like it's it's just like it exists it's it exists moving on to gothita we have look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck and put them back in any put them back on and on top of their deck in any order uh this card evolves so it does have that going for it whiny voice choose one of random card from your opponent's hands i again this card evolves let's see what gothitelle does Psycho Trip, 40 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. 90 damage. Choose two random cards from your opponent's hand. Your opponent reveals them and shuffles them into their deck. We've seen how Trevenant Dusk Noir does pretty well with this attack. This attack is only two energies. It is a stage two Pokemon, though. Um, if we have a way to manipulate this in the future, I'll give it uh, middle of the road. But until then, it is just generally pretty bad. Um, don't bulk it out yet in case we do get an attack that allows us to copy out of the discard pile or something like that I, i'm just not sold on it <clears throat> we have golette uh this pokemon evolves basic 30 damage attack basic 50 damage attack meh then we have golurk basic 80 damage attack basic 180 damage attack i think it's going to be impossible to get these both off i think this card is just generally terrible um if there's a way that reduces all the fire the colorless energies maybe this card's playable but until then meh uh we got to dene this is one of those mad party pokemon so psychic colorless colorless 20 times for each mad party pokemon we already reviewed the galarian mr rhyme is that card okay i'm not sure i think uh right now right now the concept is bad we don't have enough support for it it's too much work to get the attack off for not enough damage i mean you need to have at least if there's four of each mad party pokemon um, in your deck and there's four mad party pokemon that's 16 pokemon you need to have one pokemon in play because we don't have any limitations right now so that means we can have 15 in the scar pile that's 300 damage and then you're out of your pokemon we don't have an easy way to bring them back we don't have an easy way to manipulate damage on it um I've tried building it with Arceus to Algapalkia to use Altered Creation to do that extra 30 damage. It, it doesn't get there, really. Um, I think it, the idea is pretty cold right now. We got uh, Moralul. This Pokemon evolves. Your opponent's active Pokemon's asleep. Flop, 20 damage. And it evolves into Shenotic, 30 damage. Flip a coin of heads during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon it can attack. Fear of the Forest, 60 plus damage. If Glimwood Tangle in play, this attack does 120 more damage. I mean, this would be fine for a pre-release if we had them. Uh, otherwise, it's generally terrible. Uh, don't play this card. Um, we got Mimikyu. Your opponent's benched Pokemon can't be healed. Uh, a card like this is... And then it just does 30 damage. A card like this is... We have nothing that's really healing on the bench right now. But if we have a lot of healing on the bench, it's definitely Flames. Mimikyu's in general have had some decent abilities or just decent playability in the tcg um heal stops one of those cards that you want to hold on to and maybe at the right time this card's absolutely busted otherwise it might not be busted we'll see exactly how it is synesty uh this card evolves into pulte guys so i i do want to say that synesty in general is one of my favorite pokemon in general not tcg cards by any means it's kind of terrible but as a bit of a streetwear aficionado, I do like how there are alternate forms of this synesty where there's an authentic or if there's a, a fake form. 
Uh, they probably have different names for them. I mean, I'm not that serious in the Pokemon Sword and Shield lore. I just thought it was cool that there was a way to authenticize a Pokemon um, with the teacup in terms of value. Uh, this card, Patina damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. That's not going to see play on its own. But we do have Pulte, guys. You may discard a Pokemon that has Mad Party attack from your hand. This Pokemon, once during your turn, you may draw two cards. And it's a Mad Party Pokemon. Um, this card, again, it's going to go with the Mad Party. It's I'm not sure about it. The thing that's whack about this card is with the amount of Mad Party Pokemon that we have, it's you want to set up multiple of these Pokemon, but then that's taking away from the Mad Party Pokemon you could have in your discard pile. Kind of really hurts it. Um, if we got like another set or like a few other Mad Party Pokemon, this card might absolutely be absolutely busted, broken, hot fire. But until then, it's not like Zorak GX. It's not like uh, the Chinchino deck. It's not like anything. It's just another Mad Party Pokemon. Has a cool ability, but it's just not there. Um, moving on to Diglett. 20 damage for Scratch. It does evolve. Uh, we got Doug Trio. 30 damage. Flip the coin of heads during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done from and effects of attacks done to this Pokemon. This card's really basic, and it doesn't really do anything. So it's just generally terrible. Uh, don't play this. You could bulk that one out. Larvitar. Luckily, this Pokemon evolves. It's just a 10-20 damage attack. Moving on to Pupitar. 20 damage. 40 damage with Rocket Evolution. Search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and play it on top of this Pokemon. I mean, that's interesting. The fact that it costs three colorless energies is a little steep. If it costs one, um, I'd be a lot better with it. Let's see what Tyranitar brings. 120 damage. Discard a Stadium card in play. 250 discard the top five cards from your deck do we have a way to really power this up quickly i don't think so this could work with uh maybe colossal from rebel clash i mean if i gave galarian darmanitan uh a, a maybe i'm gonna give this card a maybe this card seems like it might be able to work but that's a that's a steep maybe please don't judge me on this one Trapinch, <clears throat> 10 damage if there's a stadium card in play. This attack does 10 more damage. Cool, it does evolve. I mean, the art on this card's absolutely adorbs. But we'll see how it goes. We got Vibrava, 20 damage does for a single fighting energy. Discard This attack does 10 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. I mean, that's okay, it does evolve. We got Flygon, if this Pokemon's your active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat. I mean, that's kind of cool. What else has it got? Uh, fire, or fighting colorless, colorless. 130 damage. If your opponent has a stadium card in play, discard it. If you do, during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage and effects done to Pokemon, done to this Pokemon by the attacks of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, so we can get around this with boss's orders. Um, our opponent's Pokemon retreating or just not playing a stadium. I think this card's generally pretty bad. Um, it doesn't really do enough damage. It's interesting enough, and it does remind me of a Flygon deck that did very well in 2009, but it just misses the mark in all the right ways to make it generally pretty bad. Um, next up, we got Soul Rock. So 90 HP. If you have Lunatone in play, so this is one of those combo cards. Uh, your opponent's Pokemon in play have no resistance. I mean, if that becomes relevant, this card becomes hot. But until then, it's just like, yeah, you might want to keep one in your binder if it becomes relevant. If. Gigantic if. If it does not become relevant, it's going to be quite bad. I mean, that's a that's a given, but just so y'all know, that's where I'm at. Um, Hippopotus. That's a mean looking Hippopotus. I would not mess with that card. 10 damage. Flip two coins. This attack does 30 damage times the number of heads. 70 plus. So like, Whatever. That card does evolve. Let's see what Hippowdon does. 150, 80 damage times, flip three coins. This attack does 80 for each heads. 150, coin flippy, not really enough damage. Uh, this card is just generally terrible. I don't think this card's really living up to the hype by any means. At all, unfortunately. Moving on to Rhyperior V. We haven't seen a V Pokemon for a minute. So 230 hp cool F fighting colorless colorless 80 damage discard energy attached to your opponent's active pokemon fighting colorless 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 210 during your opponent's next turn this pokemon can't use heavy rock artillery i don't know how i feel about this card i mean 
its attacks are like kind of balanced, but I think it falls into a situation where it's it's kind of like Torquoil. It's just not good enough to be good, and it's not bad enough to be bad. This is a card that's like head scratching because its potential as a tech could be okay. I think there's better fighting Pokemon out there, so I'm gonna generally put this card as bad. But I'd be willing to take it back if this card got some more support. Um, right now, it's just not where it's at. Then we got Diggers B. This card does evolve from Bunnel B. Um, so we got to treat it as such. 90 damage, 140 damage. Why do they print cards like this? At least make each card interesting. This card's terrible. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're a Diggers B fan, I think it's absolutely good for you. And when it comes to the TCG, we're going to be straight up Ruthless Savage. Pissimian, search your deck for two basic Pokemon. Put them on your bench. Shuffle your deck. 70 damage. Again, I mean, it has Call for Family, but this card's generally bad. Um, we've only seen, like, I don't know, Chandelure use Call for Family. Are there better attacks out there? Yeah, I think there's just better ways to run this card. Then we have Galarian Surfetched. Um, this is a reprint of the one from Rebel Clash. Uh, 180 damage this Pokemon can't use Meteor Assault again until it leaves the active spot. The Meteor Assault does... It does, does, does meet the potential of doing enough damage. So I think it's, I think it's cool enough um, where it's in the, in the middle. I think it's worthwhile to just consider that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it otherwise. Um, I think it's, I think it's good enough against Eternatus. Maybe if we can get it out and maybe attack, there's Karate Belt with it. I mean, it's got some support. I've tried to build it. It's not necessarily great. It's not necessarily terrible. Then we got Galarian Slowbro V. Um, I mean, this card is a card that I've tested in Eternatus for a little bit. Um, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon poisoned. So I think after one of your Pokemon gets knocked out, this is a great Pokemon to send up, especially if you could attach a Hide Darkness Energy. As long as that card gets printed, it gives it free retreat. Um, its attack is not very great. Um, but I do like it for its ability. Um, I'm going to give this card a middle of the road. Uh, I'm not sure on it, but I think it's okay, especially for its quick draw poison attack uh, ability. Okay. Um, moving on to Grimer. This is a card that evolves. Discard one card from the top card of your opponent's deck. Attacks like that are okay, but there's better attacks out there. 50 damage, Sludge Whirlpool. This card, luckily, again, it evolves. Your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned. Uh, during Pokemon checkup, which is in between turns, put three damage counters instead of one. So it's just triple poison. I mean, it's not an ability. It is an attack. This card is not great. <clears throat> We're going to treat it as such. We've got Spinarak. 10, 20, 60 HP. This card exists. It does evolve, so we will keep that in mind. What does Ariados do? When you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may switch one of your opponent's evolution Pokemon um, with their active. So it allows us to gust if they have evolution Pokemon. I think VMAX count as evolution Pokemon. Um, not to necessarily say they're going to have a VMAX on their bench. Um, this is a pretty specific card, but I think it's okay. Um, it's not necessarily hot fire, but this card could become hot fire in the right circumstance. And what do we see sneaking out here? We see Crobat V. Whoa. Uh, if you've read the set review, this is probably the best card in the entire set. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to your bench, you may draw cards until you have six cards in your hand. You can only use that ability once during your turn. Uh, and its attack is basically not important. Its ability is allowing you to draw more cards. This is a Dene GX. This is an, one of those types of Pokemon. Um, this is a card that you probably want to own um, four copies of just to have. Same thing as the Dene GX. Cards like this are really important. It's absolute hot fire. This card's Insano. I totally recommend that you give it a shot uh, and pick up a bunch. It's it's just a really worthwhile card. Yeah, they're going to be expensive. It's something you're going to have to deal with. This card's pretty great. Okay, what do we have here? Dark Eye. If this Pokemon has a dark energy attached to it, it takes 20 less energy or 20 less damage from attacks. Blah. You can tell that uh, I can't read properly. Uh, 60 damage for th three colorless. Attack is an additional 20 for each dark energy attached to this Pokemon. I think there's better options than this. I I'm going to assume that there are. This card is bad. 
Um, it is Dark Fodder for Eternatus, which I'm assuming, again, is in the sets. So if you want to play this as Dark Fodder, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Purloin, 10 damage. 20, flip a coin. Again, this Pokemon evolves into Leapard. This Pokemon can't be paralyzed. I think this card is absolutely terrible. So we're going to give that a gigantic thumbs down. Not enough playability with this card. It's just doing way basic stuff. There's Dino. Dino is a basic card. It does evolve into Zwellus. Zwellus is a basic card. It does evolve into Hydreigon. Hydreigon, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a dark energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Uh, 130 damage. I mean, this card is like Rain Dance Blastoise for dark Pokemon. Um, whether or not it's playable right now, abilities like this are absolutely hot. Um, but if we're talking about its playability right now, it's kind of meh. It doesn't really have a lot of options. Um, there are a couple deck profiles on my channel. I totally recommend you check those out. Uh, just peek around through the post-rotation Darkness Ablaze format. This card will see play at some point, I think, at least maybe in the expanded format. Just having an ability like this for Dark makes it really cool. Hoopa, kind of like Zapdos from uh, Team Up, 90 damage, but this Pokemon had to go from the bench to the active spot. 120 HP, I think this card's really good. Um, it's, it's playable in Eternatus, it might be playable in its own deck. For a single energy doing 90, that's a really good conversion ratio. Um, you can knock out important Pokemon like Jirachi on the first turn of the game. We have Nicket here. Nicket's really basic. It's a uh, flip a coin of heads your opponent can attack during your next turn. I mean, the art on this card's absolutely crazy. This looks to me like it's not a Pokemon. If you showed me just a picture of this, I'd be like, what is that? But it does evolve, so let's see what it evolves into. Search your deck for two cards, put them into your hands. It's this really weird fox pokemon that wears like a mask i don't know this does not look like a pokemon to me i don't remember this from when i played sword and shield on my nintendo switch um i think this card's generally pretty bad um searching your deck for any two cards with nasty plot it's doing no damage there's better ways to search through your deck i'm pretty sure um we got our first uh v pokemon out of our dark type grim snarl v this attack this pokemon uh 220 hp which is fine 40 damage for an energy and then 200 um, returning two dark energies for, to your hands. I think this card's like okay. I like the I like this attack, the second one. Uh, doing 200 damage and then returning a couple energies could be okay, especially with the Hydrogen that we just saw right over here. Um, it would be something that would work really well with that, just doing 200 over and over again. Then we have Grimstar all VMAX, uh, 330 HP, does 170 damage for three darks, and you could add up to two more darks onto it, um, and it will do an additional 50 damage for each one for the first two only, maxing out at 270 damage. Do I think this card's okay? I think it's meh. Um, doing 270 damage for five energies is okay, but it can do it over and over again. So for a VMAX, this is probably going to work really well with Hydrogen. Otherwise, it's probably not going to work well at all. Um, moving on to Eternatus V. Eternatus V is probably the most hyped up card in this entire set. And believe me, I've been doing the testing and it's it's definitely worthy of its hype. Um, Power Accelerator is doing 30 damage. You may attach a Dark Energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. I think that attack's cool. And then for Dark 3 Colorless, 120. If your opponent's active is a VMAX, it's doing 240. I mean, I think this card on its own is meh. Um, but it does evolve in the Eternatus VMAX, which is one of the coolest VMAX we've had so far. Eternatus VMAX is at 340 HP. Absolutely beastly. This doesn't even look like a Pokemon. This looks like we're playing like Yu-Gi-Oh! or one of the other card games that I can't seem to name off the top of my head. If all of your Pokemon in play are Darkness type, you can have up to 8 Pokemon on your bench. <coughs> Skyfield. <coughs> uh, Rayquaza. <coughs> and you can't put any non-Dark Pokemon into play. It stops work if this ability stops working, like if this Pokemon got knocked out or something like that. Discard a Pokemon from your bench until you have five. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. And then it does 30 damage for each dark Pokemon you have in play, which is 270 damage um, possible for two energies. Insano. The set is uh, this is one of the biggest reasons to pick up cards from the set. I think this card's great. Two energies. So. Turn one, attach a dark energy to Eternatus V. 
turn two, attach a dark energy to Eternatus V, evolve into VMAX. Um, Crobat V, for example, is dark type, making your deck more consistent. In general, I just think that this card's really strong. I don't see any reason why not to play this card. It, it, it's a really cool card, and you probably want to have a play set 4 4 Eternatus V, Eternatus V Max. Um, we got Scissor V up next. Uh, hack off 30 damage, discard a Pokemon tool and an energy, special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon, 140. I think this card is an option. It's not the greatest option in a metal deck, but it does exist, and I think it's worthwhile um, to ha at least have an option as a 30 damage Pokemon. Um, Scissor VMAX, again, 90 damage. During your opponent's next turn, this attack, this Pokemon takes 30 damage less from attacks, 190. This could work really well in a metal toolbox deck. Is it the best metal Pokemon we've seen? No, it doesn't compare to Zacian V. It doesn't compare to Lucario Melmetal GX, but this card's not bad. Um, so it's getting a meh from me, but it could see a lot of success in the future. We've seen Lucario Melmetal Zacian decks take off. This card falls more in line with that than a Zacian ADP deck. So I, I'd say give it a try. Got Skarmory, uh, 10 damage. Uh, if this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool attached to it, it does 40 more damage. Um, just the fact that it can do 50 damage for a single energy, I'm going to give it that. That's about it. Beyond that, it's pretty bad. Um, if it had free retreat, it might be slightly better, but whatever. Aeron, really basic, 10-20. Um, kind of living with the theme of the sets. It does evolve, though. 30, flip a coin, it's plus 30 for 2, 50 damage. Again, this Pokemon does evolve. And to the Aggron, if this Pokemon has full HP and would be knocked out by damage from an attack, this Pokemon is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10. Um, maybe there is some kind of cool stall deck with this. I'm going to give it a meh. It's probably closer to being bad because it's a stage 2 Pokemon. The ability is cool enough that uh, sturdy, sturdy might work out. So this is the card that evolves from Carablast. 10 damage, it flips three coins. If one is heads, it does 20 more damage. If two are heads, it does 70 more damage. If all three are heads, it does 140 more damage. Does not meet that at least 160, 170 damage threshold. So this card is just generally, I mean, it's for a single energy. I'm gonna put it, I'll give it that for a second and then I'm gonna give it bad. Um, if you find a way to break this, feel, feel free to let me know in the comments below. It's not making my buy list, unfortunately. I'm just not about it. <clears throat> so we got uh, some Pokemon here, some more evolution Pokemon. Search your deck for a metal Pokemon, reveal it and put it into your hand. I mean, that's okay. At least it's a consistency booster for the deck. It evolves into Clang. Search your deck for a metal Pokemon and put it into your hand. And then it has an attack that can do 60 damage. I mean, sure, we'll take it. It's better than nothing. Simple Beam, 60. Uh, and then 200 damage if there's no Cling... If there's no clink or clang on your bench, this attack does nothing. Um, I'm going to give this actually a meh. Um, if, I, if I'm giving Pokemon that do 170 damage plus uh, this, I mean, it's a single prize card Pokemon that can one-shot a Pokemon that's weak to it. That That's basically its only playability, playable strength. Moving on to Galarian Stunfisk V. Ability... This Pokemon gets plus 20 HP for each Metal Energy attached to it. That's kind of cool considering Metal Saucer does exist with this spooky Pokemon. Uh, Trapping Bite, Colorless, Colorless, 60 damage during your opponent's next turn. If this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, even if it is knocked out, put 12 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. That's kind of a spooky attack. I think that this is uh, an interesting card to add into a Metal deck. For that reason, I'm going to give it a middle of the road meh. Uh, is it going to see immediate play? I don't think so. Is it going to see play at some point? Probably. Depends. It's a really weird card, so we'll see how this one works. Melton, another one of these cards that is 10 damage and then 20 damage for two energies. Very basic, very to the roots of uh, Pokemon. Is it great? Meh, but it does evolve. So Melmetal, 30 damage, attach an energy card from your discard pile to this Pokemon. 130 for four uh you already know what it is you hate to see it but it's hot garbage uh unfortunately really cool looking card uh great for collectors not really great for tcg play we do have q fant so 60 damage i mean 60 damage is fine it's just it evolves it's not really relevant this pokemon can't be affected by special condition 
if you have any Pokemon with damage counters on the bench. This attack does an additional 120. Um, again, this falls in the, it does 170 damage or more. It can knock out a VMAX Pokemon. Um, if, if it, it could be cool, maybe it could do like 240 is an okay, a bit of damage. I just don't really see how this is going to work in a deck. Four energy is a little bit much, so it's probably going to be this, but we'll give it a chance here. Kangas Khan. 30 damage if any of your poke if any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack during their last turn. Attack does 90 more damage. I mean, it's not even for a single energy. This is just not really cutting it at this point. I I don't really see how this card's gonna see success. Tauros, 60 damage. This card does not evolve or anything. You hate to see it. More filler. Center it. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon. Put it on your bench. Luckily, this card does evolve. For it, draw three cards. And then 90 damage. Flip a coin. Again, they're just absolutely killing us here with these last Pokemon of the set. Dunsparce. If this Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, discard the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Uh, 20 damage attack. This is a mill card. I'm going to give it this. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Will it work with Curse Shovel? Possibly. Will it work in a mill deck? Possibly. Will it never see play? Possibly. We'll find out as this as the format evolves. We got uh, Teddy Ursa here. Baby Doll Eyes, the defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. Uh, 20 damage. It does evolve. 70 damage. Discard the top card of your opponent's deck. 120. I mean, it's really easy to run through these terrible cards. This card's just doing nothing. Lugia, 30 damage, 120 return energy to this Pokemon attached to your hands. I mean, we hate to see it. It's just not working for us. <clears throat> just moving on. Skitty, search your deck for an energy card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Cool. That he does evolve. Switch your opponent's active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. 90 damage i mean we're getting absolutely slaughtered in the set most cards in the set are bad i mean i guess that's probably the same thing to say for most sets it's just there's a really lack of creativity when it comes to a lot of these cards like 90 damage for three energies like come on give me something to work with the card it's absolutely beautiful i think this card's really pretty i'm sure it's gonna make a lot of players happy to pull this card and just look at it but a lot of players are also going to be sad when they can't play and it's and it doesn't have an interesting second attack salamance v i think this card's really cool it does 30 damage for each of your opponents to each of your opponent's pokemon we don't really have too many spread cards 160 damage for its second attack this card's colorless so it could work with a welder engine it could work with a porygon c engine is it good yeah i think it's actually even good on its own i think this card's generally pretty solid um, evolving into Salamance VMAX, 320. It's weird. I would have felt like this one would have been one of the ones with 330, 340. Um, this attack does 40 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. I think that's really cool. With Max Wings, you could really set up some cool attacks, especially with the powerful Colorless Energy, if it does come out in the set. Do I think this card's the most playable VMAX out of the set? No, but I do think it's quite good, and it could see some more play in the future depending on what other cards we get. So I think this card's cool. Starly, this is another one of those Bird Keeper um, attacks. If you played Bird Keeper from your hand during this turn, ignore all energy in its attack cost of this Pokemon. Search your deck for any two cards and put them into your hand. I think this card's okay, especially if Bird Keeper becomes good. Um, maybe it's a deck, maybe it's a meme. We'll find out. Uh, Staravia, this evolves. Oh, so similar to the Rowlet, it does evolve. Uh, flip a coin, 20 plus 20, 40 damage. Meh. What does Straptor do? You may move as many energy cards attached to your Pokemon as you like to your other Pokemon. 170 damage. This Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. I don't think Pokemon are weak to colorless. So I'm going to take the chance and think... I assume that I'm right. I don't think any Pokemon are weak to colorless anymore. So I got to give it a big, big, big thumbs down. The 170 damage here isn't going to become relevant with Brave Bird. I mean, it's it's not necessarily great. Ducklet, flap, 20 damage. This ducklet is adorable. Luckily, it does evolve. Otherwise, it would just be a gigantic thumbs down. 
Swana. So it's a bird keeper Pokemon, 70 damage. You may discard one card from your hand. If you do, this does 70 more damage. I mean, I'll give it this, but it's out of all the bird keeper Pokemon, this is probably the worst one so far. It does damage, so maybe it's okay, especially if we're doing it for free, but bird keeper is a supporter card. We'll see how it works. Uh, it evolve. It has to evolve as well. It's not a basic, so it's going to be hard to put play out. We got Bunnelby here. Um, <clears throat> twenty damage. This attack does twenty damage for each Pokemon. It's a Mad Party Pokemon, so we've already covered Mad Party. This is our third one, I believe. If not, if it's our fourth one, I think it's our fourth one. Not sure on it. We'll see exactly how it goes. Okay, jumping back into the mix, we have a uh, Fletchling. This is a card that we've we've already looked at its other forms. They weren't great. Fletchling itself, it's gonna get a pass here because it doesn't know it's gonna evolve into hot trash. I'm sorry, Fletchling, your future is not very bright. We do have Squavit. Squavit's one of my favorite Pokemon. It makes me feel like myself. I am a chubby cheeked squirrel. Uh, 40 damage. It flip a coin if head if tails this attack does nothing. I mean that's fine, but it does evolve. Greedent 20 damage before doing damage. Discard any Pokemon tools attached to your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, hidden run 100 damage. Return this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your hands. I think this is pretty cool, especially with Twin Energy. Maybe there's ways to boost this up. I think this card is going to be okay. Uh, we'll see exactly how it goes in the future. Uh, Ruka D. 10 damage, you may discard all Pokemon tool cards from your opponent. This Pokemon does evolve, so let's look at the evolution. Corvus Squire, Corvus Squire, 30, 40 damage, flip three coins, could do a 120, whatever. Let's see what Corviknight's doing. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to evolve a Pokemon, you may choose one of your Pokemon. Return that Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your hand, 120 damage. I mean, could this work with some kind of loop deck? Potentially, I could see it working. I'll give this card a head scratch. If there's any way to make it work in the future, this card seems like it could be cool. I don't necessarily see... It doesn't seem like it's going to be too great to me, though. Moving on to the trainer cards. The most exciting part of most sets. Um, we got Big Parasol. Um, so it's a tool, so you can attach it to a Pokemon. As long as this Pokemon card is in the active spot, prevent all damage done to your opponent's... Uh, Prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to all of your Pokemon. Um, I mean, that's okay. Um, they can still snipe your bench. It's just preventing all effects. So a Dragapult could not do damage um, to the bench if the big par Parasol is attached to the active. This card, like, it could be okay. We'll see how it works. I mean, we'll see how it works. Billowing Smoke... If the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's Pokemon, that player discards any prize cards they would take for that knockout instead of putting them into your hand. I don't see which deck would rather you discard the prize cards instead of drawing them. Like, if it's one prize card, for example, your opponent, like, what matters? I, like, maybe this works in a stall deck or a control deck. So for that reason, I'm going to give it that. But in most circumstances, I think it's probably not going to be too great at the beginning. Um, it would have to be a deck that would manipulate your opponent's hand to zero. So even if your opponent's able to get attacks off, they would be drawing zero prizes. But this would be something where your opponent could go Tool Scrapper. Your opponent, if they're drawing prize cards and you have them in a complete lock deck, you're probably not doing a great job anyways. I mean, sure, this might be a secondary measure, but I just don't see it being absolutely great here. Um drawing prize cards doesn't necessarily like those cards aren't going back into the deck necessarily so it's not really i don't know i i'm just not feeling it there's bird keeper um supporter you can switch your active pokemon with your bench and you can draw three cards this card's a gigantic meh i think it's okay um switching cards like this and olympia and other cards have seen success in the past so it's not bad it's just the draw three i mean this card ruined Hop's entire career. Hop's feeling absolutely terrible today. So, Cape of Toughness or Toughness Cape or whatever we're going to get in when it's called in English. Um, the basic Pokemon card this attached to gets 50 HP. GX Pokemon don't get anything. I think this card is generally good. Adding HP to a Pokemon sounds pretty cool. Search your deck with Familiar Bell. Search your deck for a Pokemon with the same name as the Pokemon in your discard pile. Reveal and put into your hands. It's kind of hard to get Pokemon in your discard pile as we speak. 
So I'm going to give this po this card a head scratch, but it might be worthwhile in the future, especially if you get like a Battle of Compressor reprint or other cards like that. Moving in to our stadium cards, we have Glimwood Tangle. So we did get Glimwood Tangle once during each player's turn. If that player flips any coins for an attack, they may ignore those results and they may begin to flip the coins again. I think this card's interesting enough, especially if you're doing a coin flip attack deck. If you are not, then Glimwood Tangle is probably terrible. We got Kabu here. Shuffle your deck, shuffle your hand into your deck. Draw four. If you have only one Pokemon in play, draw eight cards instead. I mean, <clears throat> this card's generally on the bad side already because you have to have one Pokemon in play to the full effect. But maybe there's going to be a deck that breaks it. Um, shuffling and drawing four is not terrible. That's two less than a Cynthia, and that card was considered heavily viable. If it was shuffle and draw five, this card would be this but it's not four is just a little too low in this format i think um drawing aiden cards instead of this card does work would be insano old pc flip two coins if both are heads put a card from your discard pile into your hand i think it's too hard to flip two heads i'm gonna put this right down i hate coin flip cards order pads already a tough enough card and that cards to me is like it's playable flipping two coins especially for an item card we don't have any way to really manipulate this it seems bad we got Piers, search your deck for an energy card and a dark Pokemon, reveal them and put them into your hands. I, I practice this card, especially with Eternatus VMAX. I think it's just okay. I'm not entirely sure on it. It's one of those things where some players might love it. I'm not sure about it. I, I think it's something that might we might grow to love or hate. Pokemon Breeders Nurturing, choose up to two of your Pokemon in play. For each of those Pokemon, search your deck for a card that evolves from those Pokemon and put it on that Pokemon to evolve it. Then shuffle your deck. You can't use this card during your first turn or on a Pokemon. I mean, there's a lot of rules here and evolution's not necessarily great. Uh, you're not really attaching energies. You're not really accelerating. This isn't doing too much. I think it's okay. Might see some use, but I'm not about it. Um, Rare Fossil, this card by default, I'm just gonna give it a meh. It's a 70 HP Pokemon that can evolve into any of the Arcta Draco Zolt Pokemon Arcta Zolt. It, it can't be affected by special conditions. It can't retreat. Um, it is a prize card. You could discard it from play. I mean, it's not bad. It's just hard to judge. We have Rose. Attach up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon VMAX. If you attach any energy cards in this way, discard your hands. I mean, I'm going to think this card's I'm not sure about it. It's really hard um, because VMAX Pokemon have vastly been underwhelming so far. Not necessarily from this set, but just in our current format of uh, Ultra Prism to Rebel Clash. Adding Darkness Ablaze in there. I, is Rose going to make that any better? I'm not sure. Discarding your hand is kind of meh. I mean, this card is meant to be combined with Rose Tower. So once during each player's turn, that player may just draw cards until they have three cards in their hands. It's not terrible you draw some cards there might be some other things i think this cards again a lot of these trainers are just like head scratchers not entirely sure how it's going to work spike myth is whenever a player's active pokemon moves to the bench during their turn put two damage counters on that pokemon i think this is cool um there's probably ways to abuse it so it's probably between hot hot fire and being a middle of the road card it's either good or not now, Struggle Gloves is a card that I didn't even know existed. Um, and it seems like we just got it added into our set. You can see by the low res scan. So if the Pokemon this card to attached to has weakness to your opponent's active Pokemon type, that its attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. That's really interesting. Um, it, might, it might allow for some cute things to happen. But overall, it probably is closer to meh. You really have to rely on weakness and attacking specific Pokemon. So it's taking away options. But just having this card is a great option. It's the most damage we could add to an attack. So I don't I don't necessarily hate this one. Now we're getting into probably the best item card in the set. Maybe the best trainer card overall. Flip a coin of heads. Attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your basic Pokemon. That is not GX. Um, this card is absolutely flames. I hate that it's a coin flip. The fact that it's a coin flip is killing me on the inside, but we have to see exactly how it's going to work in the format. I've been working this with ADP Zation. I think it really helps that deck 
become a little bit more consistent beyond that it's just like okay um yellhorn both active pokemon are now confused i don't know how i feel about this one i'm gonna give it this uh, confusing your opponent's pokemon might be okay maybe it's not maybe it is we'll figure that out heat fire energy as long as this card is attached to a pokemon it provides fire energy gets plus 20 hp i like this option i think this card's absolutely worthwhile um, might not be in every single fire deck but i do like the option and just giving more hp is usually pretty strong um now we have high darkness energy as long as this card is attached to a pokemon provides dark energy i mean i think this card is also fire if it's working in a deck that's dark type it gives you an option for free retreat i think free retreat's really good powerful colorless energy while it's attached to a pokemon it provides colorless energy um it the attacks of the colorless pokemon this attack cards attached to it's doing plus 20 i mean this card again the energies in this set are pure hot flames um it's like strong energy doing plus 20 damage this card has unlimited potential i mean semi semi unlimited it, it it goes for each colorless pokemon printed but we'll see what comes out in the future so here from the set it looks like we have some full art cards i mean the full art cards look good i don't need to review them because they're the exact same i'm just merely scrolling to see if there's anything out here that we did not cover that might only have a full art or anything like that not that that usually happens in sets but it's something for us to double check Kabu, Piers, Nurturing, we got a new Gold Rivel Boom, Gold Colossal, Big Parasol, Turbo Patch, and Capture Energy. So Darkness Ablaze will be releasing in August. There is going to be my buy list of the sets. Um, it, it's going to be in the description, so be sure to check that out, along with a link to all these translations. I think that Darkness of Blaze is overall a cool set, um, but it is a little bit on the weaker side. We don't necessarily have a lot going on in here. Um, the cards that are good are very good, but you're going to be specifically targeting those cards. A lot of the trainer cards are meh, and a lot of the other cards are meh. So check it out. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is of these cards, and we'll check it. We'll, I, I mean, I'm active in the comments. So feel free to argue with me on any of these cards. Feel free to be like, yeah, you're Zach. You're 100% spot on. Let me know how you feel. Until next time, peace out, peeps. Have a good one. Really hope that you enjoyed watching that video. I totally enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video, share the video with everyone that you know, and subscribe to the channel as well. Totally appreciate all the support. we got a lot of cool things happening on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Be sure to check out the social links in the description. Thanks and have yourself a great one.